everyone and welcome to this update video. We're going to ask some hard-hitting questions about the Jurassic franchise. Just you wait. Um, the first one being, what is... I mean, it's been a while since we've done this sort of video, you know, like to the camera and sort of asking about the franchise. And that question being, you know, what is the future of the franchise? We have seen now that uh, Dominion was supposed to be, or it was said to be, said that Dominion was going to be the last movie in the franchise. So, uh, is it going to be the last movie in the franchise? I mean, without even looking at any articles, I think I can be the one to tell you it uh. probably won't be. Why? Because it makes a fudge ton of money. And that's pretty much all a franchise needs to do to survive. We got a excerpt here from an Empire Magazine uh, article. So it says, speaking to Empire in Malta for a major new interview, marking the end of his decade working on Jurassic movies, Trevorrow, I used to call him Trevorrow, um, spoke about how the evolution of the series in Dominion was no coincidence. They were always planning to go for locusts. I promise. That was not a last minute thing. <laughs> I specifically did something different than other movies or other films in order to change the DNA of the franchise, he explains. A move taken to provide fresh new opportunities down the line. The previous five films, I like that, the, the previous five ones, uh, are plots about dinosaurs. Uh, technically, they're not plots about dinosaurs, or at least the, the second one kind of is. They just have dinosaurs in them. This one is a story about characters in a world in which they coexist with dinosaurs. What? It couldn't, it couldn't be more wrong. <laughs> like, when on when on earth do you ever see dinosaurs and humans coexisting in Dominion? Ever. What, the end credits when there's like horses and parasaurolophuses or ankylosaurs and that one woman going, Hey, look, dinosaurs. You never see anything like that. And in fact, in my review of Dominion, I said I can't wait for them to get off the island because I forgot that they weren't on an island because they pretty much have to like evacuate it or escape it just like you would an island. So yeah, that's a big fat lie <laughs> for the franchise to be able to move forward because it's inherently unfranchisable. Is it? I think six movies is saying that it's not inherently unfranchisable, Trevorrow. Oh, Trevorrow, or if you want to be called. Uh, there probably should only have been one Jurassic Park. I mean, he's got a point. Yeah, it probably should have just stayed that way if it was just being Jurassic Park. Um, but if we're going to do it, how can I allow them to tell stories in a world in which dinosaurs exist, as opposed to, here's another reason why we're going to an island. <laughs> So, bit of a hot take from Trevorrow there. He's basically saying that uh, he needed to change what Jurassic Park was in order for new ideas to happen. Um, and it's going to get into this in the next bit because he basically stuck himself into a hole. I understand where he's coming from, but at the same time, it's like, what are you talking about? <laughs> like, he's trying to say like Dominion has opened up new doors when really it's just like closed loads of doors. And now you've put people in a corner in which they can't really expand upon. And here we go. We'll go into the second part of the article. Uh, Trevorrow confirms that he had conversations with Universal about where the franchise could potentially go next. So he had a plan. That's interesting. And Dominion's fresh crop of faces hold plenty of storytelling opportunities. This movie clearly takes a real interest in creating new characters that a new generation is going to latch onto. Kyla Watts, being the, the pilot, DeWanda Wise, and uh, Mamudu Athi's character Ramsey Cole. I was gonna say Ramsey. I like how that one's not in quotation. <laughs> Interesting. Uh, who I think, uh, in the extended edition, you, I like how that. He's like, who I think, in the extended edition that we didn't really air. <laughs> and Deshaun Latchman's character, Sayona Santos, who just gets arrested at the end, uh, the writer director points out there's more to come. I mean, already you're saying that the extended edition, which is the edition that wasn't palatable to the audience, so therefore, like, like it shouldn't be palatable to... Uh, whatever. But then again, he's saying that we're going to see more of these future characters, which is interesting. I don't know if latching on to these new characters is what audiences have done, because... I mean, if anything, you would latch on to Maisie because she's been in for two movies. Or even uh, Owen Grady or Claire Deering, who have been in the three movies. But while Trevorrow uh, sees paths ahead, 
uh, promotional materials for Dominion pitched the World Trilogy Kappa with a greater sense of finality. So basically just saying, yeah, the Dominion was pitched as the end to cap off uh, Jurassic World. The epic conclusion of the Jurassic era was a tagline featured prominently on posters. I, I never knew that this was the ending of the franchise until I saw the marketing, Trevor admits. Really? No, that can't be true. It's even since like the Fallen Kingdom, the end of Fallen Kingdom was like, oh, this one's going to be the final one. Okay, those guys are brilliant at what they do. <laughs> I mean, yeah, people are going to want to see if it's the last one, right? I suppose that's how they always do it. So it's the last book in the franchise. Two films. We're going to split it into two parts just to milk it for everything it's worth. But for me, I think it might have been clearer if they'd said the end of an era. Because regardless of the cynical approach, of course, they're going to want to make more money, which is what Jurassic World was about. A new dinosaur fan is born every day. Kids deserve these movies and young filmmakers grow up on these stories. Well, I mean, technically they do, and then they find the original stuff and then go, Oh, wow, this is way better. <laughs> Much like Peter Pan and the Wizard of Oz and worlds we've returned to constantly. Interesting. This is he's, he's building up for this next point that's going to happen right now. Given the multi-billion dollar grosses of the Jurassic World trilogy alone, it seems inevitable that the Jurassic Saga will eventually return. I mean, of course, it makes money. Of course it's going to return. As Trevorrow sees it, the pieces have been laid in place for another filmmaker to unearth them. Alan Grant style. And he's ready to wait and see who presents a compelling plan for what happens next. And then this is what Colin says. What I get fired up about is if a table has been set here for another mind to do what I did with Steven Spielberg and sit down and say, listen, I've got an idea. I would love for that person to sit with me or Steven and just be like, I've got it. You know what they say? Life uh, finds a way. Now, that uh, Jurassic quote aside, all I'm hearing is excuses. <laughs> like, basically, Stephen with Jurassic Park, Colin says it was unfranchisable, right? Like, there was, or uh, I think what he really, a better turn of phrase was that you could do anything with it, right? Like, you could take dinosaurs off the island, you could make another park. And Colin did that. And now he's put dinosaurs in the wild, tried to do a little locust plot. I mean, Dominion was basically filler for the next movie. And I don't know why he didn't decide to see dinosaurs in the wild. I mean, there was just echoes of it with, you know, old uh, Maisie or like Maisie's previous self narrating over the top of it. And now this whole like, I'm just waiting for somebody to approach me and go, this is the idea. This is your next billion dollars or whatever. I mean, I get what he's trying to say about like, oh, well, I was just waiting for the next person for, you know, to pass the torch on uh, like he did with Steven. But at the same time, for me anyway, it just it sounds like uh, he doesn't know where to go with it. And he's just waiting for somebody else to come to him and go, this is where it was really going, right, Colin? And he goes, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> that aside, what, what I found interesting when this whole, like, uh, Empire Magazine thing came out was uh, this image was put around everywhere. And I think some people might have taken it uh, at surface level and had thought because there was some interesting Photoshop behind uh, one of the producers of the Jurassic franchise. I can't remember. Frank Marshall, that's it, I think. Um, and it was behind him on a screen and it was a nice Photoshop, but that's literally what it was. It was a photo. Uh, so I just want to clear the air and say that these aren't real titles. <laughs> like, the, the, it's it's an interesting thing to imagine, uh, the potential. Jurassic Lord made this, uh, a Jurassic Story Blue and Beta, a Netflix series, and then something about Kyla. A lot of fun ideas have made their way here. As you can see, you've got Hammond. Uh, people have been wanting, you know, a prequel to Jurassic Park. And that feels like maybe that's the way it would go, but I don't think that would be the next movie. Unfortunately, I think for general audiences, a, a movie that goes into the past and would dig around deep in the, the lore of the characters and how they got on isn't completely palatable to a new audience. Or at least the way it should be done isn't palatable to a new audience. I really feel like that's something that a Netflix would pick up or, you know, an Amazon Prime would do really well. Um, you know, something that can be expanded upon in more than an hour and a half, or let's say two hours and a half. That's the way these movies go now. Um, and it would just get more attention. You know, like a Breaking Bad sort of thing uh, with the original characters and dinosaurs and stuff like that. Um, you got Jurassic Deep, which, you know, focuses, I assume, you know, 
the Moses of, for instance. That could be its whole movie, The Meg, which made a bunch at the box office, uh, mainly on where it was based, I think, uh, it's set, and that was, like, in China. So they got the whole Chinese box office there. Uh, <laughs> but basically, uh, The Meg was just... that You could do that with the Mosasaur, basically. And then Jurassic Year, Jurassic Year, Jurassic Year, which I'm assuming he's saying is the next movies. Uh, we don't know what is going to happen. We have no evidence. Um, a few, I think, rumors of trademarks, or maybe some trademarks have been put in place. But really, to... So the be all and end all is at the moment we don't know where the franchise is going to go unfortunately and, and but the thing is i think it's it's going to be good i'm just glad that jurassic world is over that owen grady is done you know maybe in the next franchise we'll have him come back like alan grant and you'll get all the seals go ah, Chris Brown! <laughs> but i I'm, I'm kind of done with that i'm done with the Maisie. i'm done with this clone plot i'm done with locusts <laughs> what? You can't tell me we're building on like Colin. Yeah, it was it was in from the beginning. Yeah. Anyway, anyway. But there is something new coming to the Jurassic franchise, and that is this Camp Cretaceous. Yeah, I know the Netflix series has actually got a new thing coming. This is the Hidden Adventure coming on 15th of oh, November the 15th. Uh, after a big storm, food is scarce and hungry dinos are everywhere. It's up to you to help the camp fam survive in this thrilling interactive special so you might have noticed they said it's up to you and that is because this is the first or as you can see netflix interactive the first of camp cretaceous to be a choose your own adventure sort of thing um which is very interesting and it is also 32 minutes long which is longer than a regular episode now i don't know if this is 32 minutes long with all the footage uh, like all the different cho choices you can choose from or just 32 minutes with one choice and the reason why this is talked about uh, in the Jurassic sphere isn't just because of what it is surface level as in a Camp Cretaceous interactive thing with the Jurassic franchise and of course everything Camp Cretaceous is canon so it's always interesting to see what they bring to the table there. When you think about the Brads and everything in the same timeline as, as Alan Grant, it's like, what happened? <laughs> but anyway, I digress. The reason why this has been talked about is because of the new big bad dinosaur that you can see right there. You might be asking, what new big bad dinosaur? That's a T-Rex. Well... It's not a T-Rex, it's a new dinosaur. And there's a lot of speculation as to what this dinosaur is, and we're going to go into that further. This is all new dangers, all new choices, November 5th, an all new interactive episode. Which is quite nice because it gives you like the hide, run sort of mentality, like the options at the bottom. And that's sort of setting up this thing of, wow, really we can control uh, you know, where this goes. And Netflix have sort of, they've dabbled in this before. I think it was the Jabberwocky with the Black Mirror episode, which was quite interesting. Because this is for kids, it's very Jurassic World. Let's be honest. It's very, like, it is, it's bringing Camp Cretaceous back. It's bringing a new dinosaur back or like, you know, bringing a new dinosaur to the forefront. When Colin Trevorrow, when Colin Trevorrow, 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 when Colin Trevorrow, God damn it! When Colin Trevorrow said about changing the DNA of the Jurassic franchise, I don't think he realized it, but basically every movie had a new big bad dinosaur that had to be killed. You had Indominus Rex, you had Indoraptor, and then you had the Giga. Even though the Giga should never have been built up as the Joker, as he said. Um, and I'd love to pick his brain about why he said that, especially when he's saying that the marketing knew what they were doing. I think he knew what he was doing when he was talking about the Joker. Camp Cretaceous has a new big bad dinosaur. This one. It, has, it is nameless at the moment, uh, but it has drawn ire of many uh, people on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> and it's very obvious that they've basically just taken um, the T-Rex model and then just changed it. Anyone who knows 3D knows what they've done, basically. They took the base and then just edited it a little bit more. Um, but that's not, I think, the reason why everyone's upset about this. And there we go. And, uh, uh, the memes were great. When your official Jurassic Dinosaur is being compared to freaking Speckles the Tarbosaur, you've done something wrong. <laughs> Universal copying literally what other things were copying them for. Yes, the reason why I think people are up, up in arms about the um, the new dinosaur uh, is because it's just a bit lazy. When we have so many cool designs in the franchise that when finally we get a, you know, a new species come to the forefront, 
and it's just a T-Rex. <laughs> no, Sukamimus, which we've never seen, I think, officially in, in movie form, and loads of other carnivores, like Metrocanthosaurus and such, uh, and we get just a T-Rex. Now, I know why they've done it, because T-Rex sells. But the thing is, why does it have to look exactly like a T-Rex? And not just a T-Rex, but a Jurassic Park T-Rex. Which is why it's always nice when we get scientifically accurate T-Rex. It's like, oh, that's what a T-Rex looks like. I'd sort of forgotten. Anyway, I digress. Really, the, the true uh, tragedy and crime is that we never got uh, the the real sequel that we, we wanted. And that is, of course, everyone running away from a giant Kenji. And th there is two camps of thought when it comes to what this dinosaur is. Uh, or at least I'm in one camp and it's just me. And this is why I think people are calling it the Tarbosaur, basically. So, Tarbosaur sounds cooler than the alternative, which I think it could be, um, and that is the Albertosaurus. It's just, it's, it rolls off the tongue nicer. It's also had like a kind of Jurassic World tie-in toy. I've heard people say it's a Camp Cretaceous tie-in toy, but nowhere did I ever see it was Camp Cretaceous. It's just one of those Jurassic World strike and damage sets that you get. So the, the final thing of evidence, I think, as to reason why it's probably a Tarbosaur is because of this guy. You see this little guy right here? This little dude? Chris? Yeah, Chris uh, is part of the Jurassic Outpost. And I'm pretty sure that Jurassic Outpost have had sit-down meetings with Colin himself to talk about plots or merchandise or anything, you know, to do with the franchise. And he himself is saying the Tarbosaur? Question mark? You know, not saying the new dinosaur or anything other. Literally saying the Tarbosaur. To me, says that it's probably the Tarbosaur. You know, when you've got somebody who's on the ground floor talking with Colin himself and calls it the Tarbosaur, kind of feel like it's probably going to be the Tarbosaur. But we, we, we can entertain the other idea, which is mine! The Albertosaur! And my evidence is way better because of them eyebrows. <laughs> so, basically, Albertosaur was introduced, I think, properly officially in Jurassic World Evolution. And it had these ginormous eyebrows. I have no idea why. Maybe it's paleontology accurate. But anyway, every dinosaur in Jurassic World Evolution has to get the green light from Universal to be canon. Or at least, you know, soft canon, whatever you want to call it. Um, and its colorings and markings, depending on the light, kind of look similar to, you know, the one we see in Camp Cretaceous. Not only that, but there is a scene in the trailer for this new franchise, or the, sorry, the new episode, which shows a coaster. And if you look at the colorings from Alberta, so in Jurassic World Evolution, and the colorings from uh, the dinosaur in Camp Cretaceous, it looks pretty much the same. It's the same beigey, browny sort of off, off gray looking, and with the off bluey, greeny look. And it's the same sort of pattern. I mean, that's got me, right? That's more evidence than like a Tarbosaur, which is this, I mean, yes, it's spiky, but it's red and gray. I mean, yeah, there's a little bit of red in it, but look, the colors. <laughs> but I, 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 as far as much as I want to entertain this idea that it's Albertosaur, I feel as though it's probably going to be Tarbosaur because Tarbosaur rolls off the tongue and Tarb Tarbacosta sounds way better than Albertacosta. Um, and that's saying if it's even called that. Um, so with that being said, with this, you know, the whole Tarbosaur escapade that basically this broke into, let's talk about what we can expect from this. So I, I got together a bunch of different screen caps or, or screenshots that are around the internet floating around, showing the different choices that we're going to be able to make in this interactive special. So this is the first one being bring Bumpy or leave Bumpy. Um... I feel like, why would anybody leave Bumpy? But all right. And then already, first first thing, the first time we're seeing this, already I'm thinking, wait, we know what happens to Bumpy. Because at the end of Camp Cretaceous, we see the campers all grown up, right? And Bumpy's there with Ben. So we know that Bumpy's going to be fine and we don't have anything to worry about. So there's no mystery there with it. And... If I'm going to be honest, it feels like this is just a way to, you know, th this should have happened before the finale, but they released it all at the same time. And it's just another way, personally for me, I feel, to milk the franchise a tiny bit more. It's cool that they're experimenting with something different. It's just a shame that, you know, the experiment was Tarbosaur and it looks like a T-Rex. Can we not have got something else? I know it's what the viewers want, but uh, anyway, anyway. 
So the other choice we get is um, at night, and this is either the car getaway or the roller coaster. And, you know, the fact is, we have seen that this roller coaster, like, there's the chase here, there's the uh, damaged roller coaster, and even, I think, where is it? One of these other ones before. Yeah, they've, you've got them, you know, on the roller coaster being attacked by the Tarbosaur. So to even have a choice that isn't the roller coaster says to me that I feel like these may be fake choices. It's like, oh, you choose the car getaway, but the car breaks down and you end up on the roller coaster. It's kind of like, oh, well, you got a little bit extra, but really we're steering you towards the way we want you to. I don't want to say that this is going to end one way and there's no multiple endings, but at the same time, this is no Markiplier in space with multiple different endings and different shoots you can trickle down. I feel like this is like you choose that way, but you end up going back to the other way anyway. And I feel like already with these final other two choices, you have climb down the vine, jump into the tree. Basically, those both result in you getting on the floor. That's interesting because you will see a little bit of a different animation with each, but you do get but like down to the floor. Whereas the other one is inputting a code. So what's going to happen? Will it, you know, if they don't get the code and they're being chased by a dinosaur, will it fade to black? Because you're not getting these campers killed. <laughs> like, there's no way DreamWorks were like, oh yeah, have uh, have Toro come over and like sh like bite down on Darius and shake him about and. Then it, it like cuts back to you choosing the code again. No, it'll just be you. You, pre you maybe you pick the wrong answer and then someone remembers the right answer and then you go in anyway. That's the way I feel like it's gonna go. Uh, you've got the, the another shot of the T Rex there. Oh sorry, uh, Tarbo. <laughs> I'm already getting me confused. I mean that is the T Rex. That's the T Rex. That's the T Rex. That's the T Rex. Let's be frank here. I get the feeling that this is not on Manticorp. This is before the campers even get off the island because we've got a roller coaster. Why would there be a roller coaster on Manticorp? Unless it was supposed to entertain the guests at some point or other. Anyway, uh, I just wanted to showcase this because there's been a lot to go over, where the franchise is going, some things that Colin said, as well as covering this new thing. Um, so yeah, if you've enjoyed this video, leave a like. And if there's anything, you know, new things that come out, I would like to start covering things again because... You know, we were in this gray zone where we don't know what is coming next. So every little bit of uh, detail or juicy little gossip we get uh, could be expanded upon. And we really haven't had that since the start of the, you know, the Jurassic World franchise. When we knew it was always going to be Owen Grady. It was always going to be Claire Deering. And now, now it's like, okay, we've had that. We've had Camp Cretaceous, which was successful. Um, we've had Lego Jurassic. Let's not even remember that. Like the game and also the series on Netflix. They've also been, I think, incredibly successful. So can we now try something a bit different, please? And I'm not one to be like, I want it to be gritty and I want it to be gory. And yes, I want to be adult and PG-18, God knows whatever. They both cancel each other out, I think. Anyway, I, I, I'm not in that camp. I want something good. It doesn't have to be gory. It doesn't have to be you know, 18 plus only and have to be dark and killery like the novels. It just has to be good. Uh, like, if I, I, we get like a piece that goes back in time, like a prequel on Netflix with ha Hammond and stuff, I would love that. But we'll see. We'll see how things go. But anyway, guys, if you've enjoyed this video, let me know your thoughts in uh, down below. Do, do you think it's a Tarbosaur or an Albertosaur? Probably going to be a Tarbosaur, though, isn't it? <laughs> but if you enjoyed this video, leave a like. And until next time, I'll see you cuties later. Oh, bye bye.